Okay, uh, thanks for coming for this seminar. I'd like to introduce Professor Sergeant Kapkun from ATH Zurich, which is also called Federal Institute of Technology. Uh, Professor Kapkun has uh, a very large research group in Zurich uh, with uh, another faculty, almost 30 uh, PhD students. Uh, he just organized a workshop on wireless security in the month of uh, September or October. And uh, to give you a background, uh, uh, Professor Surgeon uh, graduated uh, from uh, Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne. It's also called EPFL. And his PhD thesis was done with Professor Huba, which is he's one of the leaders in networking. Uh, Professor uh, Kapkun has got his undergraduate degree in Croatia, uh, University of Split, and he has also worked in uh, UCLA and also in the Technical University of Denmark. And we are very delighted to have him here. And uh, I think you're going to learn something and as well as remember him for a long time. Hope he comes back again. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Bharat, for this very nice. Uh very nice introduction. So thank you for this very nice introduction. So the, the topic that I'll be, that I'll be covering today is, is about securing navigation or better say securing localization and also time synchronization in wireless networks. And I'll show how um, securing navigation can also help in securing some basic um, in setting up some basic security security services in wireless in wireless networks. So we do live in, the, in an age of wireless communications, and we are probably in the future going to live in, um, in a more, let's say, surrounded by even more wireless networks, from robot networks to vehicular networks, sensor networks. All these wireless networks will be, will be around us. So we will effectively digitalize our, our physical world. There will be a lot of sensing, and there will be a lot of, a lot of communication, mobile wireless devices uh, running around us, or we will run around carrying those kind of devices. So a kind of a catch catchphrase there is also an internet of things, right? So from RFIDs to vehicular networks. So in those kind of networks, the importance of location information is, is very crucial. So what, what changes when you, when you go mobile from a fixed computer that you, that you, that you place in your, in your office? Well, what what changes is that the location of this device changes all the time. I mean, you go mobile, so the location of your device changes all the time. And you can leverage on that, and as it was shown through many years of research now, that you can leverage on mobility, and, and we can, through knowledge of, lo of, of, of location, we can gain a lot. So uh, in terms of security, there are a number of, of applications that can benefit from obtain, obtaining a correct information, or better say, a secure information about the location of a, of a given device. Equally applies, uh, the same thing applies to time, but here there are some, just some applications that can benefit from, from this information about the location of the devices, especially if you have safety critical applications or if you want to protect some infrastructures. Well, if you place the sensor somewhere, you want to know where, where that sensor is at all times. You want to know if someone moved it and you want to, you want to be able to verify if someone is claiming to be at a given location that he is actually there. So because of the large importance of, of location, many terrestrial and, and global navigation systems have emerged. And obviously, GPS is, is, is the most prominent one. So you, we use a set of satellites emitting certain, certain <coughs> signals that we pick up on the surface of the Earth. And we, we obtain our, our location through that. So that's satellite localization that most of us are pretty familiar with. There are a number of, of terrestrial localization systems, namely developed to enable indoor localization and also to enable localization in, in some sort of ad hoc scenarios where either the satellites are not available or where they are not, they are, they can, where the, the signals of the satellites cannot be received or are, for example, jammed. One can also extend localization to multi-hop scenarios. So there are many, many 
uh, research papers and commercial systems available today, either based on received signal strength or time of flight or time difference of arrival that will give you your location, provided that you install a certain infrastructure in the, in the buildings or, or, for example, on a university campus. So, there are many localization systems, but people haven't really looked at the security issues there. So they, they haven't really looked at the vulnerabilities of these, of these localization systems. And this is what I, I'm going to go briefly through, and then I'll show you one example, or better say a few examples, given time, of secure localization, secure localization systems. So what are, what are the problems here? Well, if you take GPS, for example, everyone would say, well, this is a very nice system, it's very well built, it's designed to provide us with a location. We have these satellites, which are, which are sending certain signals, right? And we compute the ranges to the, to the satellites, or better say, pseudo ranges. And then based on some calculation, we are going to compute our, our location. But these signals are not authenticated, so they can be reproduced. They can be replayed at a different location. And they can be, for example, delayed. So the reason for this, so an attacker can, can essentially introduce a delay of the signal received at your, your device. And when he reduces a delay of a signal received at your device, you will obtain an incorrect location. Your, your computed location will be, will be somewhere else. And this is not just, just fiction, right? I mean, there are well, well documented, and I'll show, show that later, attacks on GPS um, that work in that way. So there are many attacks that one can do. You can manipulate the ranges, you can replay the signals, you can delay the signals, you can simply block the legitimate signals and generate your own signals. Uh, it is very easy to do that. GPS signals are very weak, right? They are, they are extremely weak, 10 to the power of, of minus 15 watts. So you can easily overshadow them with, with, something, with something else. The codes are, that, that are used there are, pre, are, are known, so you can simply you can simply overshadow the signal, and and the signal of the and the original signal will appear as noise in the attacker's in the attacker's signal. So the delay is pretty easy, right? You can fake a location of a device as you as you wish. So instead of obtaining its true location, well, the the uh, the device will will obtain a different location, a spoofed location P prime. And the device doesn't know what happened, right? I mean, it's only receiving the signals and computing its location. So there are many examples how this can be done. You can buy a GPS satellite simulator and just get closer to a device uh, with this simulator than, than, what, uh, than the satellites are. Obviously, you are much closer. You can use a much higher power. You can overshadow the signals, and there you go. Right? You can spoof any location. I can, instead of your, your device showing that you are here in, in West Lafayette, you, can, you would, for example, be, uh, it would be indicating that you are in Hawaii or somewhere else. Maybe you want to be there, but you're in fact not there. So, and someone is trying to convince you that you are. Now, if you take an example of a, of a robot which cannot have such such uh, um, ability to to estimate where it actually is or to do some deduction, then you can do do quite a lot. Well, there are certainly more more <laughs> aggressive ways of of doing denial of ser service attacks on, on satellites. Right? You can just shoot them down, as China recently did to. Uh, as a, as a test, right? You can launch a pro projectile, and you can just kill kill GPS. So that's another argument why we need a more robust uh, terrestrial localization systems because we need an alternative, right? I mean, you cannot just keep on launching satellites. It's not as as easy as setting up some terrestrial mobile mobile localization system. And you can easily, obviously, jam, right? I mean, there are many many examples of jamming GPS. Even military GPS can be can be easily jammed because of such a weak, weak uh, strength of their, of their signals. But it's not only about GPS. So GPS is just an illustrative example that's probably known to all of us, right? But if you, if you, if you take a closer look at any, time, any type of localization system, be it time difference of arrival based, be it received signal strength based, being some plain multilateral